What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the grotto. Oh, this audio comes in okay. Psych! I stopped using that shitty USB mic. We have a real mic going on, but there's like an AC unit. There's a pool with the fucking waterfall behind me. I don't know. This is gonna be really good content if I can deliver audio in this video. All right, so let's make this shit happen. Here's what we're talking about today. Three rookie running backs, the incoming class that are currently being drafted outside of the first two rounds. So you're thinking third, fourth round, maybe undrafted in your rookie drafts. You know, after we talk about them in this video, they will no longer be going that late in, look, in the rookie drafts. Good things like this never last. Uh, these ADPs will not last. We are pulling the ADPs from our good friends over at playerprofiler.com. They have been running rookie mock drafts for the last few months and more recently. Recently, I believe they've ramped it up to at least once a week, if not multiple times per week. That is very sharp dynasty audience over there. Um, so they're not like paid drafts or anything, but I do trust that the data is probably the closest thing to real rookie drafts you're going to find on the interwebs at this current moment. The data for their ADP stuff is behind a paywall, so I can't give y'all the entire cooked up product, but I can show you some of the ingredients behind it. But head over to playerprofiler.com if you want to uh, sign up for their package. They're always doing very, 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 very fantastic work over there. Let's get into thy list. You know what we have to do first. It is like 85 degrees right now in LA. I am in a full jumpsuit. It is Super Bowl Sunday actually while I'm filming this. We're about to kick off a four hour live stream. But we stay tucked. We stay tucked. We're no longer gonna yell and we're about to eat. First kid on this list is Rashad White, Arizona State. This ADP is going to last about as long as snacks last in bed. He is the 26th pick overall, the RB8, which puts him in the 302 range. I did a, a first round mock draft last week on the channel where I went through the first 12 rookie picks in single quarterback leagues. I took him, I want to say he was like my 109, 110, something in that area. And I do think he eventually jumps up to the end of the first round, very early second round in super flex leagues when the rookie drafts actually take place. But as a right now he's a little bit unknown he's gotten a lot of hype recently because he balled out at the uh, senior bowl so there's no chance that he continues to be a third round pick but i'm a piece of shit so i'm gonna use it for good content and let y'all know about this kid anyways to let you know that i was on the train early and i stayed for the duration of the ride okay rashad white out of arizona state as i said rashad white came away from the super bowl as one of if not the single winner at the running back position i really like this kid man he is super athletic and play all three downs he's a bit older though and that's kind of one of the problems that you're going to see in this year's draft class. You have the guys like Brees Hall and Isaiah Spiller at the top. They're the cream of the crop there. And both of them are 20 years old. You have a lot of these older dudes that are coming into the league, 22, going to be 23 by the time that shit starts. So there is a severe, you know, the talent level might not be that big of a drop off from a guy like Isaiah Spiller to a Rashad White. It might be, you know, it might be a little bit of a drop off there. I could be exaggerating because we're an anti-Spiller brand here. The age difference gives you, you know, all else equal. If one of those top guys hits, you get their prime for like three extra years, which is huge. But that also gets baked into the ADP. Just keep that in mind when you're drafting in this year's rookie draft. The ages are a big discrepancy here, okay? So Rashad White started his college career at JUCO. So whatever. Uh, we don't really care about breakout ages when it comes to running backs. People that are smarter than me, people that run the numbers know that there's no correlation between breakout age and running back, like the importance of that shit happening at the wide receiver position, okay? Transfers to Arizona State for his junior and redshirt senior year. His senior year, he pops off. He does the normal thing that would get him on the NFL radar 182 carries a thousand yards 15 rushing touchdowns but more importantly more 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 importantly 43 catches 456 receiving yards and a tug there so you're looking at nearly 1500 yards from scrimmage 16 total touchdowns but 43 fucking catches man this kid is so so smooth in the passing game and he's got the size man he's 6'1 about 210 pounds so he's a lot you know he's like an athlete looking dude he's like the marlon mack type carry on johnson type build where they're a little bit longer a little bit leaner but like that plays in today's nfl you could use them on all three downs but when we dive into the numbers uh, on the reception total fourth in the NCAA running backs receiving yardage okay 456 yards there was only three running backs that had more receiving yards than Rashad White sixth in receptions there's only five running backs that had more than 43 receptions this year in NCAA third in yards per route run so not only was he a volume guy but he was extremely efficient a lot of times you could see these dump off kings you know come out of college and catch 40 passes or some shit like Michael P Ryan and they're they're going for like 4.2 fucking yards per catch that's a sign that they're just force feeding him shitty throws in the backfield. They don't make guys miss. But when you have, you know, your yards per out run is high. 
Uh, you have ten, you're averaging 10.6 yards per reception, 18.9 yards per reception the year prior. As a junior, he's going to be a problem for defenses at the NFL. When we dive into more advanced analytics on Rashad White, we use a website called Sports Info Solutions. They are, I don't even know if you guys can actually get memberships to it, but I met one of the guys on the team. They gave me access to it and it's really, really good data. It's where our guy Noah Moore Parties pulls his data in terms of having carries against six man boxes, seven man boxes, eight man boxes, if he's running to the left or right, whatever. The advanced stuff comes with Sports Info Solutions. They have him graded out, Rashad White, as the second highest graded route runner among running backs in the NCAA. He was also a top 10 runner in terms of just their pure rushing grade. So you're getting hit from both sides, okay? I am very, very much in on Rashad White as someone who has all these tools to hit a massive ceiling, right? What happens is these Juco products move over to the big time and then they break out. They have the one year as a senior and it's because it takes a while. Like when you're playing at Juco, when you're playing at these lesser competition levels, you know, you don't have a lot of running back experience against good competition. So when they break out, they still have a lot of a lot of learning and a lot of like raw ability that can turn into upside. And that's what we see here with a guy like Rashad White. He's not as like refined of a runner as the top guys in this class. Like I don't think he's necessarily super elusive or necessarily like super divisive at the line of scrimmage. He has some really, really awesome highlight plays. But for me, Rashad White is kind of like a sum of his parts. Like the entire profile paints a beautiful, beautiful picture, right? One that I would personally buy as an NFT. All right, we're going to call this motherfucker Rashad Ethereum White from henceforth forward. So he's got the size, he's got the athleticism, he's got chops in the receiving game. I mean, you got all that down pat and it's upside, it's upside, it's upside. My comps for him, he falls into like the Tony Pollard, Kenyon Drake, Lamar Miller role. Again, like more athlete. I don't know if his long speed is going to be fantastic, but it won't be a problem at the NFL, especially at 6'1", 210. So Rashad White, love this dude. The next dude up on this list, Kennedy Brooks out of Oklahoma. Currently the 47th pick, the RB20. That's the 4'11", all right? So we're looking at a legitimate end of the fourth round rookie pick here. This is going to be the most enjoyable player that I could fight people and yell at people about in rookie drafts this year because people do not like this dude, Kennedy Brooks, man. People, they think he's slow. They think, you know, he's the next great fat running back coming out of Oklahoma. All right, we're putting that shit on paper right now. It was Regadre last year. They both opted out of the 2020 season. Kennedy Brooks for COVID reasons, Ramondre for marijuana reasons, but neither here nor there. They both ate their way into the motherfucking NFL and both going to be very, very good for a long time. Okay. And again, People do not like Kennedy Brooks. The same people that don't like Kennedy Brooks were the same dudes that did not like Ramondre Stevenson last year. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit, has I watched the tape and I'm like, dude, I really, really, really like this kid. The first time he got put on my radar was when I was doing Ramondre Stevenson prep work last year. And I started watching Ramondre, I'm like, dude, this, this dude's tape is super, super good. Why is he not more highly regarded as a prospect? Why does he not have any production levels like the other fucking top running backs in the class? And I'm thinking to myself, let's look at the numbers. Let's try to paint a picture here. I go back. And I see that this kid, when, when Ramondre was at Oklahoma, Kennedy Brooks, as a true freshman, came in and ran for a thousand yards. And I'm like, oh, so this dude beats out Ramondre, runs for a thousand yards as a true freshman. He has to be like a big, big, big time NFL prospect. I do more research to Kenny Brooks. He doesn't really catch passes, et cetera, et cetera. So I was a little bit hesitant, you know, to shout from the rooftops here of the grotto about Kennedy Brooks. But I, I slid into my man Noah's DMs and I was like, yo, do some work on Kennedy Brooks. Get back to me so that we can be a fucking Kennedy Brooks brand. We are the new Brooks brothers, okay? He comes back to me, goes, yo, Kennedy Brooks is kind of nice, at least as a runner. And I get it. I get the concerns for him. Like there there are sometimes he looks like he's he drank some promethazine while he's running fucking outside zone runs. Sometimes he looks like he just, when he's trying to change direction, it looks like he just woke up from a nap or some shit. I get it. He ain't the fastest dude around, but he is nice. 2018, again, true freshman season, runs for over a thousand yards. Sophomore season, runs it back a thousand yards. Ops out of 2020, comes back in 2020. 21, guess what he does? Runs for 1,250 yards. Three seasons at Oklahoma, three seasons of over 1,000 rushing yards on the ground. 8.9 yards per carry that first year. His true freshman season, he ran for 8.9 yards per carry. Let that sink in. I want to break down exactly how impressive that was too. He did it as a true freshman, one, when sharing the backfield with Trey Sermon and Kyler Murray running the football. As a sophomore, went for over a thousand yards, splitting carries with again, Trey Sermon and Ramondre Stevenson with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. Like we talk about, you know, wide receiver prospects. It's impressive when their teammate score is high and they're sharing the field with other really talented wide receivers. Dude, Trey Sermon, Ramondre Stevenson, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, this dude is still ripping off thousand yard seasons every single time he's on the field. His career yards per carry number in the Big 12, seven. Seven yards per carry throughout his career.
career in the Big 12, 472 carries, so not a small sample size. That's number one of all time. Number one all time in yards per carry in the Big 12. The next running backs on that list, Joe Mixon, Amon Green, Deonta Foreman, some dickheads named Byron Hansford, Justin Crawford, Ricky Williams, Jamal Charles. Pretty damn good company. And when we start to dive into the analytics, this is what I love so much about Kenny Brooks. I love these players who don't really like flash. And a lot of people are going to say he's like slow, whatever. When you look at the analytics, man, when you look at elusiveness rating, broken tackle rate, yards after contact per attempt, breakaway run rate, literally all of it, he is in elite status. Top 10, if not top five in the entire NCAA among all of these fucking running backs. He's 5'11". He's 2 15. So he's got the three down size if need be. I don't think he's going to be a three down player at the next level. He does not catch passes. 10 catches his freshman year, 10 catches his sophomore year, nine catches his senior year. He looks fine on film catching the ball, but I'm not one of those guys. It's like if they threw to him, he would catch more. Like there's a reason they don't throw him the fucking ball because he's probably not that good of a pass catcher. So I'm not going to, you know, hype up some bullshit about how he's going to be a pass catcher at the next level. Let's hope it happens, but I'm definitely not banking on it. His straight line speed will not blow you away, but I guarantee you whatever people are projecting him to run in the 40, it's going to be better than that. I think he does break the four sixes. I think when you're 215 pounds, I think he'll end up running like a, somewhere in the four, five, six to four, five, eight range, maybe. And that's pretty good size adjusted speed for someone that big. I am really excited about this guy. My comps for him would be guys like Damian Harris, similar style to Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt's definitely a better running back. He's obviously a better pass catcher, but in terms of elusiveness and like Trey Sermon, I think they're the same kind of mold here. I think Trey Sermon's best comp is still like Damian Harris, Sony Michelle, Jordan Howard. He's in that mold where he's going to be a very, very, very good runner at the next level. And going a little bit deeper on those actual analytical numbers, uh, in terms of elusiveness rating per PFF, ranked top 12 among 170 qualified NCAA running backs. Sports Info Solution, number 11 overall out of 200 running backs. Yards after contact per attempt, top 12 per PFF. Number 15 per SIS, 200 running backs, sample size. Breakaway run rate in terms of runs that he turned into 15 plus yards, 12.7%. Number five in the NCAA. Breakaway run rate is a huge factor for guys who aren't gonna have long speed, okay? The Damian Harris types, those guys are always very highly ranked in the breakaway run rate because they have great vision, they have great burst, but they can't get to the second level because they don't have the long speed. But you need to see that high breakaway run rate and this man has it, okay? every Again, every analytical number he is, he is top 20, top 15, top 10 in terms of the things that you need to see from a running back who isn't going to give you those long plays or isn't going to be contributing in the passing game. Absolutely love Kennedy Brooks out of Oklahoma. Let's move to the last one. I'm also going to give away four or five honorable mentions that I think you guys should go check out the film for yourself. Damian Pierce out of Florida. He was the other big winner at the Senior Bowl, apparently. Uh, Rashad White and Damian Pierce, I think, separated themselves uh, at the Senior Bowl per everyone that was, was there. He's currently going undrafted in rookie drafts right now. I'm not going to lie. I judged a book by its cover on this one, man. It was it was like the Bible. I took one look and I was like, no way this thing is going to improve my life whatsoever. Because you look at the box scores, man, there was not a single year. He was there for four years, 2018 to 2021. Didn't have a single year where he had more than 106 carries, had more than 574 rushing yards, caught more than 19 passes. I'm like, there's not a green fucking flag on this entire profile. Until the senior year, things started to look up a little bit, okay? Four-year player, did not declare early, but man, am I glad I watched the tape and dove into the freaking numbers. And this man, Douglas Crandall, I don't know who you are, but I owe you an apology. I'm assuming he's a Gator fan because ain't nobody fucking in on Damian Pierce prior to the fucking senior bowl. And, and I'm just sorry, man. I'm, I'm sorry that I judged the book by its cover. The first thing to note about Damian Pierce is his size. He is a legitimate like 5'9", 215 to 220 pound player. He's a fucking bowling ball. And the defenders are literally just pins on the lane. There are times I watch him and I'm like, she, this man might be slow as fuck, but it has not hindered his ability to make plays and, and his tackle breaking ability whatsoever. He is fantastic on third downs, very good pass blocker and asked to run a lot of different routes at Florida. So the one thing I need you guys to just understand when it comes to this kid, do not judge the box score when you're looking at who this kid is as a prospect. The raw stats, fuck them, because the overall efficiency on a per play, just, you know, per carry or per reception, whatever you need to look at efficiency wise, he's an absolute baller, okay? I looked at Sports Info Solutions. Number two overall in missed tackles per carry, four straight, 37.8%, okay? Number two in the NCAA, only behind the god, Bijan Robinson. Imagine not owning the only one of one Bijan Robinson NFT. Couldn't be motherfucking me, but I need to get me a Damian Pierce NFT now, maybe. Breakaway run rate, top 33 among 170 running backs. So 33 is not something that you're gonna be like, oh my God, but 33 out of 170, pretty high percentile. So what I said with Kennedy Brooks, 
Also goes for a guy like Damian Pierce, 34th in yards after contact per attempt. Again, out of 170, number one overall graded runner per Sports Info Solutions in the country over Bijan Robinson. Now, when we look at the third down chops, number 11 in the NCAA in yards per route run, number four overall graded route runner at the running back position per SIS, top 15 in pass blocking grade in the NCAA, great hands, didn't have a single fumble this year, didn't have a single drop pass this year, 16 touchdowns on just 119 total touches. That is once every 7.4 touches. There just ain't no blemishes with this kid when you look at it, when you look at him from per touch basis, man. This is going to be one of the very rare cases that I'm confident this kid's going to be a better pro than he was a college player at Florida. And I was pretty surprised because I asked I, I asked Noah about him too. And when he ran the numbers, uh, he said he came away not overly impressed. And I think that's a good thing. I like to fucking argue with people and not have all the same takes and whatever, whatever. He thinks he'll probably be a role player at the NFL. When he posted his comps, I mean, some of them are not good. Good, but some of them are very fucking good. He has comps up in the Ezekiel Elliott range, Nick Chubb, Darius Geis is up there, depending on how you feel about Miles Sanders. I feel like that's not a bad comp to really have. I mean, he could very well be Niles Davis or Tony Jones, but there are some big time players on this list, man. And I will link Noah's piece on Damian Pierce. Again, Noah's doing awesome work at breakoutfinder.com. He's ripping off numbers about every fucking rookie running back. And they are really, really, really good baseline things to read to get familiar with this class. So make sure you're following him at Noah Moore Parties, also linked in the description for a guy like like Damian Pierce, my comp for him would be like a James Robinson or like a Mike Davis, you know, someone who's, I don't know if he's going to be amazing when he's carrying the ball, if our team's going to really give him a ridiculous volume workload at the NFL level, but he can play on all three downs, man and he can do it efficiently. So those are my three favorite late round, third, fourth, undrafted free agent running backs in the rookie class this year. We have Kennedy Brooks, we got my man Damian Pierce, and we got Rashad White, who won't be allowed to be on this list for probably, as soon as they rip off the next mock draft, he's shooting up the motherfucking boards. Honorable mentions, you should go check out Keontae Ingram out of USC, uh, Sincere McCormick, small school player, Abram Smith out of Baylor, CJ Verdell out of Oregon, was a guy I kind of fell off, but I loved him early on. And then um, to Quandre White, I've heard really good things. I'm hanging out at the underdog house, Brett Coleman was here yesterday. He said uh, Zaquandre White out of, I don't even know, was it South Carolina maybe? Awesome. And then Noah actually dropped an article on Zaquandre White this morning. Loves him as well. So two people I trust very highly with their opinions, Zaquandre White. So those are some honorable mentions that y'all should just go to YouTube, type their name in, type his, type verses, and you'll be able to watch game film on them. All right. So that's all I got for y'all today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We are doing Dynasty and Rookie content every single day of the week going forward for the rest of our fucking lives. All right, I love you. I'm out of here.